What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the last week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update, make sure and hit the like button before you leave and subscribe if you're not already. Now let's jump into this week's topics. First this week, we've got a release from Spectrum and they've got a new smart technology two-in-one Firma brushed ESC system. Now this combines their smart ESCs and a very basic brushed speed control. So it's a 40 amp ESC, which isn't anything all that beefy, but this looks like something that you will see or could possibly see in ready to runs in my opinion. And normally I'm not a big fan of two in ones, but if Spectrum is trying to kind of broaden the reach of their smart technology system, I see this as something that could definitely be one of those hooks that gets into people. If people have a smart capable radio and they plug it into this and they start getting that telemetry feedback from the vehicle, they're probably going to understand the, the benefits of that and then start to like some of those features, seeing different specs that they can get from that telemetry back to their radio. And then maybe in the future, expand on that. Telemetry is one of those things that I wish was more widespread, less expensive, and just more compatible in general, rather than having to be so specific from radio to radio to radio, manufacturers and all that. It's one of those areas that does seem to be lacking a little bit in the market. But Spectrum being owned by Horizon and the huge array of vehicles and lines that they're going to own, if they start putting it into all of these different areas, I feel like this one could really gain some steam. The retail price on this two-in-one is only $44.99. And like I said, it's not a very beefy ESC, but Spectrum receivers aren't really that cheap either. So this is really an affordable package to get people interested in this system. Next is a release from RC four-wheel drive. And this one is just a fun release to me. This is a 1 14th scale, truly hydraulic powered forklift that you can buy from them. I don't know why, I mean, the heavy equipment stuff is always cool. I personally would love to own a bunch of it. It's very expensive. It's a whole different hobby on its own. But this one, just a little forklift, it's $850 retail, which isn't really that bad for a truly hydraulic powered, you know, piece of equipment. So $849, 1 14th scale. It's got a lifting capacity of about 3.3 pounds. Not that much, but a respectable amount at least. It looks like you could get it underneath of the front tire of one of our rigs and at least give it a little bit of bench flex in a cooler way than trying to flex it up on a pop can. And the total weight on this little forklift is about eight pounds. So for a 1 14th scale, that's, that's a pretty dense little RC. This one, I like. If I had 850 bucks just burning a hole in my pocket, I, I'd, I'd be hovering over the buy button on this little toy. It states in the description that a large portion of it is made from heavy metal, which not exactly sure what kind of metal that is, but it's heavy. Next, jumping over to Proline, they released a couple of new bodies this week. First one is their speed run body. This is a Bugatti flavored body for like a slash four by four style. So something that you're gonna put a little bit different type of wheel and tire on, try and get some aero, trying to get some aero over it to try and really push the speed on that platform. Seems like taking a slash four by four and trying to get it up over hundred miles an hour is a fairly popular thing to do. This is just an easy option for slapping a body over the wheels and tires completely and giving you a little bit of an advantage. While this isn't really something that fits all that much in the scale world, it's just cool to see when companies just kind of throw out a product that's just a little bit on the fringe and something fun. Hopefully someone there did it as like a passion project. Just kind of trying to expand what's out there in the market. It just creates projects out of nowhere and it's something that I like to see. And the next body they released is something that I was really glad to see. And that is an actual pre-painted version of that 1967 uh, truck body that they released for the UDR in the actual heat wave graphic. When they were first teasing this body for the Traxxas UDR, they showed it with this paint job. And I was just like, oh, I love that body. I love that real trophy truck and seeing it on that Traxxas UDR really just made me want a UDR much more than I already did. And now that you can actually just buy it done and you don't have to pay a couple hundred bucks to have somebody actually paint that or more, what a that's a winner. I know that that means there'll be lots of them out there in that style now, but regardless, to have that heat wave on a UDR, if it only, if it fit on my shelves, I'd probably already own one, but th these are 1.9 shelves, so. What else can you do? Then last week was the official release of the Vanquish Products K2 
Capra axle. These axles feature increased caster. The front axle also includes steering links because the axles have increased steering and to accommodate that steering and add clearance, steering links had to be added. The front axle also includes a set of chromoly VDI inner axle shafts because of the offset front pumpkin. The rear axle features adjustable upper link mounts so that you can tune your suspension a little bit further. Beyond that, the axles work with the factory knuckles or other option parts that are available. The rear axles have the portal boxes built in, of course, and they'll work with the factory gears. You can find these axles on the Vanquish website and they'll be available in both clear anodized and a black anodized finish. And then we're jumping into the biggest story of the week, which is the Axial SCX-10 III. Last week, Axial released the SCX-10 III early on Thursday morning and just came out with all of the details all at once. No teases ahead of time, just released the video showing us the truck. That's something that we haven't seen from Axial in a really long time. But the Axial SCX-10 III does feature a, basically a completely new truck. There's very little that seems to be a carryover other than the ring and pinion in the axles and the wild bore drive shafts. Almost everything else appears to be completely new. The axles are now called AR45 axles as opposed to the AR44s that they had before. I think maybe when they came up with that name, they didn't know that the AR44 was because of a Dana 44 axle, and then they just added one and called it something different. But either way, it's an offset front pumpkin with a portal setup. The portals are basically the exact same as a Capra, so option parts for a Capra will work cross-platform to an SCX-10 III, which is nice. The axle housing itself, though, is much narrower than a Capra, keeping it right in line with the typical width that you would have expected from something like an SCX-10 II. The chassis is all new. It's a high clearance design, and it's got a forward-mounted motor setup. The motor sits up high close to the servo, so way far forward, but a little bit higher. The transmission does come with both a two-speed and a dig unit, so you have that go fast or slow crawling, and the dig. Myself, of course, I like the dig functions, two speeds, not quite my thing, but a lot of people really like it. They like hitting switches on their radio. I'll give them that. The body is a Jeep. People will cry about it, but people like Jeeps. Jeeps sell, they make Jeeps. That's why they make Jeep RCs. It is a Jeep JL body, which is the current body style of the Jeep Wrangler line. And it also has an interior and an interior cage. The new SCX-10 III chassis also has molded inner fenders. So now you don't have uh, that see-through look underneath of the body. You can't see through the interior into the chassis underneath. It's just overall a very polished and complete look for this new vehicle. Overall, it looks like they did a great job on this vehicle. I'm looking forward to having one here soon and doing a full build on the kit. And next, this is the 95th episode of the Scale News Update. And that means the 100th episode is just around the corner. So I figured for the 100th episode, I wanted to do a giveaway. So what we're going to do is we're gonna give away a Holmes Hobbies Polar Pro V2 2700 KV motor and a Castle Mamba X ESC. Now I'm going to be using the website Gleam, which is a system that basically just handles the giveaway stuff for me. So there'll be a link in the description below. You can go there and click through and there's a number of ways that you can enter. There's extra ways you can enter a bunch of different things, but it handles it. It picks the winner, the whole thing. I don't even have to do anything except send the winner's name to John and he'll ship it out. I'll even pay international shipping. The only thing I ask is to make sure that whoever the winner is proves that they were a subscriber before they were chosen. So after the video, go check out that link in the description below, as well as the links to the rest of the stories for this week. You can find them all down there. And some of the entries you can actually do daily. So you can come back if you're on the channel regularly and remember to hit the link, you can just go back Enter again, increase your chances even further. I hope that whoever wins is a fan and truly enjoys the system. I appreciate all of your guys' support watching the Scale News Update. This one is a fun series to do. And thanks to John at Holmes Hobbies, he'll be the one actually sending everything out. I am paying for the system, don't worry, but he's gonna take care of it. So again, 
Thanks for you guys for actually coming and watching the news every Tuesday, giving back a little bit, and I'm just excited that we've made it to almost 100 episodes of the news already. The last bit of news for the week isn't really news news, it's just news that the Flip That Truck series has ended the first season, as we call it. I've ended up with the truck that I wanna keep, so we're gonna start that over. I'm gonna find another inexpensive vehicle to start with. We're gonna start that whole process of buying it cheap, fixing it up a little bit, selling and trying to work our way back up to another vehicle that I would like to see stay on my shelves. That is another series that's been a lot of fun. And again, appreciate all of your guys' support for following along. And for this week in the question portion of the video, I know last week we talked a little bit about what are you gonna be working on? And we got a lot of good answers. I know you guys have a lot of projects and we're hearing and learning all kinds of new words like social distancing and all of that. It's a crazy time. More than anything though, I just wanna say that I hope that all of you are taking care of your health, both, you know, mental health and physical health with being either, you know, stuck at home or worrying about being out of work, any of those things. I, I truly hope all of you the best. It just, things are very crazy right now. And just, I did a live feed on Friday and then Matt and I from the Scale Builders Guild did another one on Sunday. Just talking RC, getting our minds off of the world, basically. I feel like this hobby makes just a great escape from the world that surrounds us. And for any of you that are essential service providers or family of essential service providers, a special thanks to you guys as well. But I guess for this week, I didn't really have an actual question. So we'll just go with, uh, on a scale from one to 10, how old are you? I don't know. That's all I got for this week, guys. I appreciate you guys again stopping by. Make sure and hit the giveaway below, enter it, give it, send it to your friends, have them enter it. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully you guys have an awesome rest of the week. We'll see you on the next one.